Yeah, a awesome. <laughs> Before we get started, guys, yeah, we have been following uh, what's been going on. If I can, just to set the premise of the meeting, I cannot speak uh, for the lieutenant governor. So whatever information you guys want to share with me right now, um, I'll be more than willing to listen to you guys. And you guys can share your mana and. Uh, and then whatever you guys share, I'll definitely take it back to the lieutenant governor. So. You want it written. This is an emergency. Jordan, we um, came here to speak to the lieutenant governor, but we're going to have to the time. Um, we come because this is urgent. We're speaking on behalf of six families that are being evicted. Mm -hmm. Um, according to Laura Thielen, legally, according to us, they're not one of us, not right. And the reason I say that is because um, back in July when they sent out those letters of notice, <clears throat> we asked if it was a letter of eviction. And they, said, they said, no, it wasn't. It's just a letter of notice letting us know what the new Attorney General, his reading of the law is. Recommendation, same, his recommendation. Right, his interpretation. This same law has been in effect for at least, what, 12 years? And Earl Anzai, who was, part, who was also an attorney general a few years back, also interpreted that same law and said, with the spirit of which the law is written, it is not to get people off their lands, it's get, getting them to just do their community to do the things that they need to do in their community. That was the spirit of which Act 5 and Act 6 was written. We come here because we went to Punchbowl Street because Laura Lynn had you know, uh, two things on her agenda. And we wanted her to see the children that are being evicted, the families. This is only a, a small portion of the families that could come. And the thing that's the hardest is we're not squatters. We never we just live on the land. We didn't just go there. The We've been there. That's our genealogy. That's our roots. That's, that's our homes. We, um, I was quite taken back when Dan Quinn came from Delanar and posted because a few of our families have been working with the state, you know, because they asked us to do certain things, so we did those certain things. They asked us to do these certain things, we did those certain things. We kept literally jumping through the hoops that was asked of us. And with one letter, they expect us to vacate after 10 years of Telling us and making us believe that yeah. we were getting a lease, that's not right. And I, and I looked Dan Quinn in the eye and I says, Dan Quinn, I said, if you folks truly feel that the wording and the interpretation of the Attorney General is right, I mean, why are, it's like every time we, turn, we change Attorney General, are we going to be in jeopardy? You know, in jeopardy of losing our place? I said, because that's not right. You know, how can the lives of six families be predicated upon someone's opinion? One gentleman. And everybody gonna listen to him and just say, okay, well, he's right and now people just need to go. Within a couple months, we go back into legislation and the session opens up. Satan mm -hmm. he has tried to put together some legislation to correct this, to make things poor. You know, we don't need any more homeless people. And that's how we will become. We will become homeless. Because Kahana is our home. You know, there's one thing to have a house, and there's one thing to have a home. And your <coughs> home is where your heart is. So that's how crucial this is. So when we say urgent, I mean, the bulldozers, they told us the bulldozers coming on Monday at 6 a.m. I called some of my best friends in my telephone book and cried my heart out to them, telling them, can you believe this? 
I can't even believe this. When I heard that they went to Torin and Evan Torin and the Kala's house to go post, I was like, how can this be happening? I mean, they're talking about the big bailout of all these different companies and all these different things that's going on around us in this, in our United States and in our world. And they actually have time to come and post to evict people off their homeland. Before the holidays, <laughs> before the holidays, I mean, where would our peace be increasing? I mean, for me, it's not even about the holidays. It's about making things right in legislation. Right now, there are three open so-called leases that the state has not been able to, because their hands are tied, they're telling us, the UNR, their hands are tied, these three open leases. You figure, you have three open leases that need to be assigned right, to legislation that could be done and corrected. I said, so what that, go ahead and just say, well, let's just make things real corner. And they say, just add the other three families don't have. That's, I mean, they said, you, the infrastructure is in, in Kahana. The state has spent millions of dollars to put that infrastructure in. They won't have to put any more lines, they won't have to put more electric, they won't have to do anything. For me, I was going to build at no cost to the state because the state told me that they don't have money. That's okay. But you see, the state was supposed to have money. There was earmarked money for the people. It was supposed to be 31 families that were supposed to be able to build. Jonah. We got no answer from Laura. That's why we're right here. She continues to tell us it's the law. Jonah, we are the law. We are the people. This, we're not squatters on the beach. That's what I keep trying to tell you folks. This, we're not squatters on the beach. We are the people of Kahana. You know, we've lived our lives very humbly. And I can say that with all honesty because when you ask people, they ask me, where are you from? I saw from Kahana. They always said, I'm <laughs> That's how quiet we've lived our lives. You know, as one big Ohana, should we get our difficulties like any other place? I said, but that's only because we're all trying to think what, what we better do in our lives. To better our community. And how to do things for our families and our community. Mm -hmm. We're not here to scream and shout. I mean, you know, they had so much guards and everything over there at the I mean, it's like, we don't come. We come with children. We come with grandbabies. Mm -hmm. We come with love and humbleness in our hearts. You know, my family, they think I'm crazy. My kids, for the last 10 years negotiating with the state, they thought I, there was a figment of my imagination. They said, Mom, you keep saying you're working with the state. What's going on? They asked you to get the money. They asked you to get your plans, your builder, to get your contract. What's going on, Mom? I said, I don't know. You know they tell me to get all these things. I, I, so I thought, who this? OK. Um, five, four and a half years exactly, you know. I did everything, I learned, I done everything. It's like first there was money, then there wasn't money. There was enough money that these two families could have built with the last amount of money that was left in the kitty, so-called kitty. Right. Jonah, they built a store called Camon Store for $327,000, 30 by 20 wood structure with only electrical in it on the flood zone. The same flood zone that they're saying that unsafe for these people to live on. The houses that surround Camon Story, these homes that these families live on, because I live right over the bridge uh, around the corner from them. But five families live right there, right next to the store that they, the state has built for 327000 Now, I would have thought as the person who was sitting up there making these calls, 327, we got like six more families to build. Why don't we just earmark that money for the families, build this, get these families' houses built, and pop. Then it's really caught power. Then it's really settled. 